Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. The word temptation means to have a strong desire to do something that we know we should not do. And in the spiritual talk, it is a strong desire to commit a sinful action. And at one point or another, we all had to deal with the overwhelming desire to do things that we know we are not supposed to do. I mean, can you think of the last time that happened to you? Did you win the battle or did you give in? Temptation is a daily fight for all of us. And after all, we are sinners and our natural inclination is to sin. But what can we do to develop the ability to resist temptation? In talking about Jesus, Hebrew 4 verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. How can we develop the mind of Christ to be able to resist temptation just like he was able to do? Well, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us. Lord, we ask that you help us, give us the strength so that way we can overcome every single temptation. In Jesus we pray, amen. So imagine someone struggling to shake a bad behavior or perhaps a sinful habit that has picked up at some point in, in his life. It could be any of a number of self-destructive behaviors such as alcohol, gambling, porn, smoking, drugs. And let's say this person is doing their very best to leave this these behaviors behind. But every time he thinks it is over, he gets exposed to something from his environment that triggers him back to the same behavior. So he tries changing his environment and he avoids like avoid hanging out with certain people who indulge in this type of behavior in order to avoid being triggered. Um, this probably worked for a while, but then just watching a movie, a scene pops up, and next thing you know, he's triggered again. Um, he tries to avoid movies and only watches sports, but then a commercial comes on showing people enjoying the very behavior that he is trying to shake, triggering him. Again, I mean, the scenario that I am describing here may seem far-fetched, but it is, in fact, the reality of many people who are trying to guard their hearts and minds from temptation. I mean, in this day and age, it is almost impossible to completely shield oneself from the temptation to sin. I mean, wherever we look, we see things that we know are sinful, but they are, are glamorized and presented in a way that makes them seem um, very attractive and makes it seem very harmless, which in most cases makes the temptation quite intense. So creating a bubble to shield our minds seems impossible. Now, even though we should avoid places and circumstances that can make us more vulnerable to temptation, that alone oftentimes is not really enough. You see, Christ lived for 33 years on this earth, but he never sinned once. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16 talks about having the mind of Christ. And Hebrews 4 verse 15 says that he was tempted in every way, but yet he did not sin. So the key to overcoming temptation is that our minds needs to be transformed in order for our behavior to be changed. I mean, I don't want to present this as a as a simple process, nor do I really want to minimize this seemingly impossible task of breaking the, the grip of addiction. But you can spend your life trying to avoid triggers, but without a transformation of your heart and of your mind, you will always be one TV scene or one commercial away from being triggered. And we should pursue both steps first. We should guard our minds by avoiding reading, seeing, hearing that which will suggest impure thoughts. Ellen White states this, the mind should not be left to wander at random upon every subject that the adversary of souls may suggest. I mean, that means 
Our minds should not always be open to being fed with any kind of nonsense that a random person dreams up or in all in the name of of entertainment. As difficult as it may be these days, we should take the steps to filter the content that we let into our minds, whether we realize it or not. They will shape our thoughts and eventually they will impact our actions. See, Philippians 4 verse 8 tells us this. Finally, brothers, whatever it is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. This takes me to the second point, which is intentionally feed our minds with content that will influence us to do what is right in the eyes of God. That means a daily surrender to self and a daily determined effort by faith to be obedient to the word of God so that a sustained transformation can happen. See, Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I will modify the text to say it this way, to be transformed by the daily renewing of your mind, because it's it's an ongoing effort. That is not to say that we will not sin or be subjected to temptation. No, brothers and sisters, we will always have this sinful nature until Christ returns. But when we strive daily to have the mind that is in Christ, sin will not have such a tight grip on us. And where we fall short, Christ's righteousness will do the rest. I pray that after this devotion, you will make a better inventory of the things that you allow in your thoughts and strive to have this mind, which was also in Christ Jesus. Saints of God, keep the faith.